the Pittsburgh Pirates head to Anaheim to take on Shohei Otani and the Los Angeles Angels. We're going to talk about the series, how the kids have played so far, and why Shohei Otani is one of one. You are Locked On Pirates, your daily Pittsburgh Pirates podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Pirates podcast, everybody here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates, every day. It's really funny that we're doing this show talking about the Los Angeles Angels because I'm on the MLB.com app, and the top story is nine possible trades for Shohei Otani. Um, Newsflash, breaking news here from the Locked On Podcast Network. It's not the Pirates. Um, Even though they would be, I believe, very – they could be equipped for it. I just don't think they would do it for whatever reason. Um, of course, we're joined by Craig today. We were supposed to have a show yesterday. Obviously, I took a mental health day, feeling much better about it. Uh, stayed away from Pirates Twitter for a whole day somehow, <laughs> so that was good. Um, but the Pirates are going to Anaheim, and they won their first game out of the break, finally against the Cleveland Guardians on Wednesday. Five five run inning, allowed the comeback. They finally looked like they had some semblance of an offense. Thank God. Um, But they enter this series against a Los Angeles Angels team that really every game right now, Craig, feels like a must win for them. Just because Artie Moreno has kind of continuously said that I don't want to trade Otani, but we're listening based off of where they're at. And the Pirates obviously in a much different position than where the Angels are being 12 games under 500 because if the Angels were in our position, Otani would be as good as gone. But they sit five games back of the wild card right now, and they're just above 500. So if you're the Pittsburgh Pirates here, you may end up being the sword in the side of the Angels and Shohei Otani if they win this series. So how do they do that against this Angels team? Well, it's been a it's been like an up and down Angels team for the entire season. I mean, injury to Mike Trout is I mean, it's become commonplace, unfortunately. You know, one of the best players of this generation uh, was thinking, you know, at some point in time, this would be, you know, getting to see Otani and Mike Trout in the playoffs. But the big thing for me is that, I mean, there's ways that I don't like this new schedule where we play everybody. Uh, but this is one of the times when I really, really, really like it because, yeah. I mean, haven't seen Otani or Trout as much as I would like. And the other reason is because I'm an old man and I don't stay up that late uh, to watch a lot of their games. But, I mean, it's a tough situation. I don't see how they don't trade him unless they're going to just open up the endless pocketbook to sign him this offseason. It just – it really, for – the future of their team, it, it kind of wouldn't make sense to not trade him. Well, and yeah, and you look at the current state of this Angels team, and they just it, – it's so wild that the Pirates made the playoffs more recently than the Angels have, seeing as they've had Shohei Otani and Trout now for six years. But you look at this team year in and year out, and it always seems like it goes back to their pitching. And that's kind of what I want to focus on. Here in this series, obviously, Otani is coming back to pitch tonight. I believe he hasn't pitched for like a couple weeks because he had a minor finger issue. They then get Reed Detmers and then Tyler Anderson in back-to-back games. So we'll see how that all prevails for them here. But that's always been the Angels' issue is they can't pitch. And then a lot of people had a revelation about it that Carlos Estevez, one of their relievers, Finally makes the All Star game. Cool, they have some semblance of a bullpen now. But you look at you just look at some of their roster and some of their games, and it always seems like the old joke about Shohei Otani and Mike Trout went four for seven with two home runs and eight RBIs, and the Angels lost to the Royals ten to nine. That might end up being the thing here with the Pirates too. I mean, the Pirates, of course, have Johan Oviedo, Osvaldo Beto, and Mitch Keller on the bumps uh, this series as well. And I think that's what this series comes down to is the pitching. Obviously I think Otani 
has a big chance to have a big game tonight because the Pirates just offensively have been a disaster for a good part of the season outside of April. So, I mean, what do you think your keys to this are? I mean, I would say pitching, obviously, against this team because if you could pitch against them, I think getting to that bullpen – you could do some damage, but how much of it also relies on the Pirates offense as usual, as it feels like as of late? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much going to be, I mean, everybody's been talking about this. I know you've been talking about this. I've been talking about this is that you just need to be more aggressive at the plate. I mean, you see players, I mean, we'll be talking about this in like a Jared Triolo coming up, just keeping his same approach that he's always had his entire career. And, you know, just, waiting for your pitch. I mean, it's, it's good to be patient, but when you see, you know, a pitch that's completely in your zone and, and where you excel at, uh, we saw that with Jack Sawinski, luckily, you know, fighting through a, a pretty big plate appearance on Wednesday. And he, he missed on a couple of pitches that were actually, you know, in his zone. Um, and luckily they just kept on being put there and he was able to get a double, but it was, it was kind of, I wouldn't say lucky on his end. Cause everybody would say, you know, he kind of fought these ones off, but there's a couple of pitches he probably should have killed. And he just didn't even look comfortable swinging at them. You know, Brian Reynolds, I'd like to see him like a lot of times when he's getting hot, it's just that he's seeing the ball so well, it doesn't seem that his swing is there. It doesn't seem that his eye is there. So I think that he's going to be a pretty big key uh, in like this series and and especially moving forward to get the offense going. I mean, because you see, I mean, like you have veterans in Kutch. Kutch has a natural, you know, patient approach at the plate. You know, mm-hmm. so does Carlos Santana. But luckily, I mean, I think G-Man Choi doesn't. G-Man Choi is the kind of, kind of guy that he's just like a hacker. That if he sees something that, that he likes, he's going to swing at it and. So that's definitely going to be a big thing. I also wanted to mention, you know, Mitch Keller coming off like his worst start of the season. Also hadn't pitched in a while. A lot of the times like these routines are so key to to pitchers and to like basically pitch, you know, before the the all-star break and then to get like the one inning at the all-star game and then kind of like almost like have – a lot of time in between like your regular routine. I I would look for a a better start from him. And, you know, Oviedo has been outside of uh, his, his normal, like, you know, blow up inning Mm -hmm. has been, you know, pretty good. And even with those blowout innings, he's been pretty good. So, I mean, the one thing I don't want to see is, you know, what's been a pattern for the pirates here is turning on the TV if I happen to turn it on late and being down, you know, four or five, nothing after the first inning, it's, it's kind of disheartening because I mean, at that point in time, I don't know if we have the offense yet, you know, to be able to, to get us back into those games. Mm-hmm. I mean, Swinsky's one swing away. If you get, you know, hopefully Carlos Santana, G man, Choi, uh, whoever it would be getting hot, would like to see a little bit more power, obviously from like a Henry Davis, Um, but yeah, it's going to be like, okay, get through the lineup at least the first time and then maybe be able to get, you know, some runs on the board because I mean, that could change the the entire outlook of the game, the entire approach of the game. Mm -hmm. And, and I do know that, I mean, I I do listen to a lot of pirates podcasts and one of the big things is, as I forget who it was, I always like to give credit where credit's due, Mm -hmm. but basically talking about like how this approach at the plate uh, for the pirates is not much different than, you know, across the board in in major league baseball on like the third called strikes and and different stuff. Um, But just to allow players to just be a a tiny bit more aggressive when they, you know, get the pitch that they, they it's in their zone and and they can drive. Yeah. And I think that's been, a big reason why they've fallen off the beaten path a little bit here. And like they went along the beaten path because of stuff like this, where I forget what game it was, but I think it was the first of those two guardians blowouts where they had two Capita Marcano bunting in the eighth inning. And they were down like seven to one or seven to nothing at that point. And I'm like, what are we doing here, dude? Like bunting is not going to get you back into the game, but at least now with what we can watch with this Pirates team. At least 
we can watch the kids. And we're going to talk about how the kids have done that we've seen called up over the past couple of days and how they've been performing. But before we do that, I want to talk to you guys about eBay Motors. eBay Motors has the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices with their eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers for a championship team. It's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Want to listen to the hometown broadcast of the Pittsburgh Pirates? Craig could be doing it if he is a little bit late going to his uh, going to his next stop today as he's traveling. Download the SiriusXM app, SXM. You can listen to the hometown broadcast of the Pittsburgh Pirates, even though Joe Block might put you to sleep. Uh, you can usually do that. Um, so, obviously, we had a very big series of up and downs over the past four or five days, Craig, because we get – Quinn Priester, Andy Rodriguez, and Leo Piguero coming up here alongside Jared Triolo, Nick Gonzalez, and Henry Davis. A lot of the top prospects are here. Monday, we were like, okay, cool, Quinn Priester's first start. Let's have some fun. Like, let's get a win and have some fun with these kids. Big loss. <laughs> Next day, big loss. Wednesday, you looked like you were going to lose again, and then you come out and get that big uh, five-run comeback to win the game. From a microscope, though, I like this a lot. Because there's going to be growing pains. I think that's something that I've said ad nauseum this week on the show, that this was not going to be a red situation where Quinn Priester, Eddie Rodriguez, Leo Piguero, and all these guys were going to come up and they were going to go on like an 11-game win streak. It would be nice. It, it would be great. But it doesn't happen often. And also, if you want to play a little joke right now, Henry Davis has a higher WRC plus than Ellie De, uh, Ellie De La Cruz right now. J just saying. And the Reds have also been on a skid of their own. They're three and seven in their last 10 games. So it's a big thing with growing pains with these rookie players. And we saw that immediately with Quinn Priester, who had a perfect game through three innings, didn't let up anything, and then just blew up. And Eddie Rodriguez, it took him three games to get his first hit. Leover Piguero, of course, had his first hit last year in that call-up that he had in 2022, but he's been playing shortstop and doing okay over there. So what has been your kind of first impression of these three guys from what we've seen? Obviously, Priester being a little bit more like I, – I, I say Priester is the one that I expected the least from, if that makes sense, and I can explain that after you answer. But what have you seen from these guys so far that's kind of made you – like that caught your eye a little bit. Well, Priester, I mean, the biggest thing from him and, and from watching him in Indianapolis is he has to have that control. I mean, he does have the four to five pitches, but even like early on, and I think it was like the fourth inning or so, we did see some, you know, him not being able to reach the zone. I think at one point in time, he threw, I think it was like five balls in a row. So for him is just to, to try to stay consistent. Um, Everybody, you know, kind of pointed to, you know, he does have the ability to throw like a 97 mile per hour fastball, but he doesn't really have the ability to, to locate it. It's really going to rely on the sinker, big curveball, you know, slider slash, you know, sweeper, a little bit of a cutter. I mean, he's and his change. I mean, that's where he's kind of going to operate in. And it's not that I, I mean, I wouldn't say I liked to see him get hit around, but it's almost like he needed to kind of get that out of the way to see, you know, what types of pitches were going to work. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was nice to see Andy catch him, but as everybody that watched the broadcast noticed, like none of those calls were coming from Andy. Probably wow. about 95% of the calls, you know, were coming from the dugout. I think once Andy gets adjusted to the major leagues a little bit more and is a little bit more comfortable behind the plate and he's the one making those calls, I I, I would like to see that a little bit more. Um, and with Piguero, I mean, if, if we're going to say, like, Piguero did well 
Um, in double A, he kind of brought his average, brought his OPS up, um, but did struggle to start the season. Um, I was kind of, if I was going to say like the three people that I'd be looking, you know, and like you said, maybe not expecting the most from it may have been Pagaro, um, just because he only had a short stint in triple A finally got going in double A Priester. I, I kind of almost knew what to expect from. It was either going to be, you know, six innings of shutout ball and, and looking amazing and, you know, doing what he did through the first three innings, or he was going to have this little bit of a blow up, but I'd rather see it now than, you know, so that he could like be able to do things to adjust to it than to, you know, see it down the road. Um, Andy, I don't know with any, his, his season has been extremely strange. Started off very slow, then had the forearm issue, was able to come back. And he's only really been hitting like himself since I think it was like June 20th when I looked back on it as to, you know, but he still hasn't been hitting for um, as much power uh, has had like some of the exit velos come up a little bit and everything, but it's more been like the gap to gap, you know, doubles power um, and a little bit of stuff like that. I know the one time he went four for four and everybody's like, bring him up. And I'm like, he didn't have a hit that was over 80, like 88 miles per hour in that game. And it was like a lot of bloop stuff going on. And then ironically, I, his first hit is a bloop, is a bloop single to the yeah, outfield. To the outfield. So, I mean, Andy, I think is a great hitter. I think the other part is, is that what people um, kind of don't understand and something that I, I've talked about with myself and Chris and, you know, on Bucks in the Basement is that, you know, you also, when you're, getting adjusted to even triple a catching and, you know, into the majors. I mean, it's a lot of information to, to come in. And sometimes the thing that has been the easiest thing for you, which has been hitting, it, it may fall off a little bit because you have so much information you have to take in uh, to prepare for those games. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, I mean, I could kind of see him having a slow offensive start, but I would rather, you know, him be doing this at the major league level uh, and and being able to adjust to that because, I mean, the hope of the team, I would think, is that he's going to be your primary catcher um, in 2024. So I, if he's going to have to take his lumps and make his adjustments now, I, I'd rather see him doing it at the major league level. The same thing with the Henry Davis. We saw him come up, light the road on fire for about a week and a half struggle for about a week and a half. And now he's kind of coming back to his mean. And like you, you basically said there is that, you know, he's had more barrels. He's got a d better WRC plus uh, a better OPS than, than Ellie De La Cruz. I mean, he's adjusting as well. Um, the one player I, I kind of want to bring up and I, I brought this up. I don't know if it was on my minor league news and brews or if I brought it up on the, the regular one, you know, the box in the basement uh, is that, the one thing that's concerning me about Nick Gonzalez, and it's going to be a concern, I think, moving forward, is the strikeouts. Mm -hmm. um, he just needs to walk more, and he needs to get on base more. His on-base percentage right now is is below 300. Like, that, uh, that's not – it's not going to work. I mean, I hate to say it that way. Um, he has an OPS plus. I think his OPS is around like 732. OPS plus is like right around like the 90 to 95 range. So like you can't, I, I don't know how to say this, but I mean, he is going to have some of that power and stuff like that. But if the strikeouts continue and the power continues and, and this, you know, it doesn't walk a little bit more, I mean, that OPS is just going to keep on dropping. It's, it's, and the batting average is going to drop. It's, it's just going to be a natural progression there. Uh, the one thing I will say that's surprising for me, uh, from him is seeing a lot more range than I expected yeah. from him. Some of the plays that he made, um, and even one that I think he he didn't get the out on, uh, but just to be able to range behind second base and, and make that play, especially with, I, I would call it the new second base. The new second base is you could usually kind of put a guy there that didn't have as much range, a, a, you know, a la Adam Frazier and make them into like a gold glover. Um, now you almost need like two shortstops. You need your regular yeah. shortstop and and the you know shortstop at second base. So that's been you know something I've been extremely impressed with him about. And then 
I mean, like I said, with Quinn Priester, I, you know, I want to see, give it at least like a few starts up here. Um, and especially with a possible, you know, Rich Hill trade, um, I've been hearing more rumblings of that uh, throughout the media um, over the past few days. I mean, he's going to be up here. You hope Luis Ortiz is able to make his way back up here. But I want to see a good string of starts from Priester, like not like good as in good performance, but like a long, you can't just like bring him up here for like three games, doesn't perform, go back down. I think you need to see him kind of fight back against the league. And that's going to be the kind of the key moving into next year for a lot of these young kids, just because, I mean, I don't see Gonzalez going anywhere. Obviously, Davis isn't going anywhere. Andy's not going anywhere. Uh, so, and Pagaro you kind of got to see what you have from him, especially since he's been on the 40 man for the past two years. So mm-hmm. I just want to see, you know, and, and people to not overreact when Andy gets set on a Wednesday after he caught two games, <laughs> you know, on a Monday and Tuesday, such idiotic takes. From and I won't game. even lie to you about this uh, angel series. That's something I just want to see for experimental purposes. I want to see Andy catch Keller again. I hope they don't do the two days and then hedges catches on Sunday. Just because if Keller has a bad start again with Endy behind the plate, like I could see it once. If it happens twice, then I think we figured out what Austin Hedges' role is in Pittsburgh in 2023, which is to just catch every Mitch Keller start. Um, And I agree with you 100% on a lot of these points. Quinn Priester, I am a – beneficiary of saying that I would have rather seen Jared Jones just personally. I, a lot of people have heard say that, but me, I just think Jared Jones at this current moment is the better pitcher of the two. But then, as you said, I want to see these guys push back to big league baseball. I want to see them struggle. Like I actually do. Cause that tells me more about a player when we've seen Henry Davis, he came out of the gates firing, struggled a little bit, but now he's been okay. Like, he's been fine. He's pushing back a little bit. That's how you know you have a good baseball player, when they push back. You don't want the guy that starts his career super hot and then can't do anything for a month. That's, like, you don't want that because then you're realizing, oh, he just had a hot start because he was riding a high of getting called up here, and now he can't do anything. And that's what I want to see from these guys. I just want to see them continuously put back, and I think right now is the best time to do that when you're – not competitive again, which is unfortunate because they've been competitive competing for a good part of the year and still very well could. I mean, a win streak starts and anything could happen. I mean, the Cardinals have leapfrogged the Pirates. Anything could happen in this division. But we'll end today's show by so, like very quickly marveling at Shohei Otani and a question that I kind of want to put you on the spot for because I have a phenomenal answer to this question. If Shohei Otani could get traded anywhere, if he does indeed get traded, Craig, where would you most want to see Shohei Otani get traded to? Oh man, that's that's a tough one. I I I have my answer. I have my I've had my answer for the last three months. I just want to hear what you say first. For the last three months, geez, I if I could see Otani traded anywhere, um, this is going to be like a real weird answer, but for me. I kind of like Otani, like in the Angels uniform, in the red type of uniform. I'd like to see him go to the Phillies. I wouldn't kind of see either. And kind of see how that works out there, especially when you saw Bryce Harper's extremely weird, like, what is it, six pitch, like, didn't even move the bat off. Like, yeah, if you could just have Otani, you know, DHing in Philly and then, you know, and pitching as well. Um, and I, it's not even saying I like the city of Philadelphia, that I like the Phillies, but. I would like to see him uh, maybe within, if we can't have him here in Pittsburgh, at least within the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, Well, the answer that I've had for the last three months got even funnier the other day because the first trade deadline, Fujinami was traded to the Baltimore Orioles. You want to talk about a team that currently, and I said this, they were going to do this this year, as a lot of people said they might take a step back because they didn't spend a lot in free agency. Well, the Baltimore Orioles are first place in that gauntlet of the American League East. They're in fir- they're first place there. They have the best record in the American League. They have the prospects to make this happen. 
they no doubt have I mean you're talking about Keston Herstad, a lot Colton Kowser. They have the options to make it happen. And maybe they were thinking about keeping the the checkbook a little close to the chest a little bit for something like this. And I think Shohei Otani going or even Tampa Bay, either one of those teams, just because those two teams have been in the American League East for a while now. Tampa Bay's had success, but it's nice to see Baltimore back on top over there. And I would like to see them make that move to fully separate themselves from that division because obviously I think he would. And he helps, as you mentioned, in multiple areas for that Baltimore team. He would pitch well and they need pitching. You've heard them be linked to Dylan Cease a lot, but why not shoot for the fences and go get Shohei Otani? Because then you're not only getting the pitching you need, but you're also making that offense even better. I mean, imagine an offense of Adley Rushman, Cedric Mullins, Austin Hayes, Anthony Santander. I mean, it it, it would make sense to me. It, like it's something where they have the prospect capital. Like we hear what teams have the prospect capital to trade for them. I can't think of any better one than Baltimore. No, nah, Baltimore. I, I I can kind of sign on that one. I think that would be pretty darn cool. And yeah. to see and to see him launching balls off of like the brick house back there, that yeah. would be absolutely amazing. Like genuinely, I think with the power that he has, he could be the only other player to do it other than Ken Griffey Jr. in the home run derby. I think he could genuinely hit one that far in Baltimore. And to another team that I wanted to throw out there, but I just don't think it'll happen, is the Texas Rangers. I wouldn't mind that. I just I think they are kind of dead set on what they have. But again, also pitching needs with DeGrom going down, with Martin Perez kind of taking a step back. I wouldn't mind Shohei there either. I want to see these teams that haven't been there in a while just take a swing for it. Why not? Like, even Arizona. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> like, if Shohei Otani ended up in Arizona, why not? And even if it's only for a couple of months. I've heard this whole thing about why would a team do this only for a couple of months? Why would Baltimore go get Shohei Otani for two and a half months to go win a World Series? And even trading some of their prospect capital, they don't have to trade all of it. They still that's how loaded the Baltimore system is, folks. When you look at the prospect rankings every year, Baltimore the last three, four, even five years has been one, two, or three every single year. And that's that's my pitch. I think Connor Newcomb <laughs> over at uh locked on Orioles will like that over there. I might have to send the snippet to him, but I, I I'm advocating for it. And you mentioned him looking good in the color red. I hate the color orange for obvious reasons, <laughs> but it's pretty close to, and you know, we still get them on the East Coast, so we can actually get have Craig stay up and be able to watch the games. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the show. Please marvel at Marvel superhero Shohei Otani throughout the series, but also hope he has a good series. Hope he plays well, but I also still hope the Buckos win. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in on this Friday edition of Craig Taw Thursdays. You know, it's like had to push it back a day. Craig, you're doing your normal stuff, uh, minor league news and brews. Yeah, oh. minor, league, minor league news and brews will come out. Uh, it's coming out Saturday. The audio didn't do a video one this time either because I was I was I had to look up so much stuff. And then uh, just the regular episode comes out every Wednesdays. Good deal. So that's what Craig is up to. I did not have a recap story on Inside the Bucks Basement that really mattered this week. My <laughs> Tuesday one was written, and Gary typed LOL when I told him it was done. So we'll see how that goes for next week. But, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the Locked On Pirates podcast. My name is Ethan Smith. That is Craig Toth, and we will see you on the flip side.